In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 42. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, so I we kind of took a little bit longer of a break than we wanted, but, you know, I guess it we happened. That, no, we say that all the time, so we, we need to just adjust our standards. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? We delivered the product. We said that we were going to deliver took a while but it may just be that that's how it is life interferes when this is your side project yeah all right anyway let's get straight into it so yeah um the nhl playoffs are currently going on um as of the current moment it is 2-1 boston uh they crushed st louis at their home game I'm so glad that that's the one game I didn't really watch. Yeah, I watched the first period, and then I was like, well, it's over. Um, And it's not that Bennington played bad. It's just that, like, nobody showed up. So even though he got pulled, like, it wasn't really all his fault. He had literally zero defense in front of him. Yeah, had to keep him from uh, getting uh, getting two inside of his own head, so they had to pull him. Yeah, and I mean... They ended up losing at like seven two, so it's not like it did any better. Yeah, not not really. Aside from that, what do you think of the other two games? Uh well, game one, I, I thought that one could have gone either way. I think uh, I'm on the record saying that Boston is in intimidating atmosphere, and I think that the Blues started out really well in game one, and I thought that they you know, left an impression worthy of, you know, being able to beat Boston in their home barn any day. And then they went out and did that in game two. I think that they probably should have had game one as well. Uh, If it wasn't for, you know, letting Boston get back in it after going up to nothing. Yeah, I mean, they played a really formidable game one. And that game two was close. It really showed, I think. And uh, I'm glad they took the game. It was like, it showed what this series could be. And then game three happened. Like, right. the I mean, first yeah, two games, see. close, <laughs> back and forth, everything, right? And then yeah. blowout. Yep. So it, I, it, it just, as soon as you think that you know what you're going to get out of the series, it, they throw a curveball at you and give you an absolute blowout so yeah i'm hoping that the um game four brings a or yeah game four brings us some competition it would be good to see the blues win at home for the first time it would be well i'll say this if you told me beforehand if there was one team that was going to win a game with a blowout score i I would have said it was the bruins instead of the blues Oh yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. I think that one is obviously very, very plausible. Yeah, uh, I'm just like with the way the first two games went, it was kind of disheartening to see mm-hmm. to watch even one period of that third game. Yeah, I, I mean, I probably would have turned it off, but then again, I didn't have it all. Yeah, I mean, so I was I was ahead of the curve. Aside from that, I really like the series as, like, you know, both teams have shown they can be in it. So hopefully that yeah. continues. I like when a series is even if my squad isn't in it. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? Yeah, that would be a great quote. 
Anyway, uh, on to the other finals. We have Golden State and Toronto, who are in a 1-1 tie right now in their series. And I don't know about you, but that was pretty damn surprising for the first game. I'm just here to say that I'm surprised that Toronto is in the finals <laughs> and that they have they won the first game. Because when you tell me it's Toronto's in the finals, I don't think of the Raptors, and here we are. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, all it looks like. I don't know the. Did you see that like Twitter poll that came out where like forty eight states or forty seven states were rooting for Toronto? And that's including the fact, like that's they are very much aware of what Drake does on the sidelines, and still Golden State has become that intolerable. <laughs> where 48 states will ra- would rather root for a different country. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was like Nevada, California, and Hawaii who still rooted for Golden State as a majority. And what, why does it not surprise me that Hawaii goes <laughs> for Golden State? Yeah, I mean, I was so surprised to see that. Uh, Toronto won the first game, and I don't know, it looked electric in that arena. Stadium, whatever they call it. The place where the Leafs play. <laughs> the place where the Leafs don't make the same pose. It's yeah. a shame. So, I'd, rather, I'd rather see the Leafs. Yeah, and yesterday's game, right, wasn't like... It was still pretty close. Yeah, it was, but uh, it doesn't help when Toronto started the second half without being able to hit a shot for the first eight minutes. Of the yeah, third that was that was really you, bad. You, you, spoiler alert: you kind of need to score in order to win. Order, well, I was going to say to beat the Warriors in order to yeah, win anything, you need to score. Yes, but considering the pace of how the Warriors score themselves, true, true. If you stay up at the half. You kind of have to carry that into the second half. And. Yeah. Well, they didn't. <laughs> Definitely not. It's a shame. All right. So. It, it would be so funny if Toronto was up 2 nothing in this series. Dude, that would be great. <laughs> It'd be know great. You. Golden State would probably come back and win the next four games, but it would be great to just sit there and be like. Are the Warriors just absolutely out of it? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was also, it was in Toronto, so nobody would, like, people would give Toronto props, but everybody would be like, oh, it's just home field, right? Yeah, but Toronto winning a game in the finals, like, seems somehow less plausible than the Blues winning a home game in the finals. And the fact of the matter is Toronto already did it. Yeah. Like, they did it in game one. Yeah, I don't know they if also, they did it beforehand. They had a better record, so they had their first two games of the first two games of the or their home That's games. That's not the, the first point I'm making. Just in team history. I don't know that the Raptors have ever been in the finals before. Um, I'm not sure. I know this, Let's is, see. I think this is the first time a Canadian team. I mean, they're the only Canadian team, but I think this is the first time a Canadian team's in the finals. I mean, unless the Vancouver Grizzlies did it back in the day. I tried... I can almost guarantee that they didn't. Yeah, I don't think so, man. Uh, the Toronto Raptors have one conference title, and it was this year. So, first time in the finals, they were 1-0 and in home games in the finals. And then... Now they're 1-1, and <laughs> which is still good. It's not bad for a small sample size. It's yeah. not great, but... I mean, you can't really expect much more than above 500 at home, barely. And you have two games, 500 is okay. It's not like you're 2 True. I think it depends on the sport because, obviously, uh, the college basketball tournament and the college football bowl games, they're done in neutral sites uh, to take to take away the, the home crowd atmosphere to some extent. But also, it takes away when you're dominant in front of in your home stadium. True, true. So I think there is a a degree to where you can be so much better than 500 in your own facility. And that's kind of where 
like the Super Bowl stuff like that. It, it's a limited presence. I mean, to you, try to neutralize the game. You could also be like the Blues. I think they're o seven right now in the final. I mean, you gotta start somewhere the, at, at home. So uh, building blocks. Eh, it's not the right side of the. You know, they're building blocks. <laughs> I mean, are all seven of them building blocks? I don't know. It depends on how big of a, of a wall that they're building. Fair enough. You got to climb, man. All right. Anyway, anything else you want to bring up about the finals game? This is like the longest we've talked about the NBA in forever. Um, do I have anything else I want to bring up? No, I'm good. What about you? You got anything itching, itching your uh, your your uh, mind, fancy? Nah, let's just move straight on to weird, uh, stupid stuff in Milwaukee on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, the Milwaukee Green Bay area, home yeah, of so, maybe the stupidest stuff that we've I mean, found so far. They lost in the semis, and we already did all the cities in the finals for both sports, so... Here's your consolation prize, Milwaukee. And boy, do you guys have a lot of consolation prizes. And we found them. <laughs> yeah. They're not good. You All guys right. should be ashamed of some of the stuff that you guys publicly put out there. All right. So anyway, let's just start off with the basketball the $40 hoop. The $40 basketball hoop. Yeah. Right. like or, or lack of hoop. Are you looking at this? <laughs> Like, oh, I'm sorry. The hoop isn't the problem. It's everything else that's missing. I mean, there's no net. There's no backboard. There's not even a place to put this on. It looks like it probably won't even go anywhere. It's like bent out of shape. See, I can't tell if what's beneath the rim is a bracket that's supposed to like be nailed into like a wall above a garage door, or if it's like from a dolly. That broke down too, and it's just like, oh, we put everything of the same color in this pile. <laughs> yeah, I have like, no idea what that is. And uh, it it could be yours for forty dollars. For forty dollars, you gotta throw in at least a net. Yeah. And, and hope. I mean, let's play this out a little bit more. The fact that there's no backboard means to me, if everything is there. That someone's actually shooting a ball against their house as if it was the backboard. Which or not great for real estate. Um All right. just, No, nope. Let, let's hear your idea. I mean or they could have just, you know, like used the backboard for some other dumb DIY project. Okay, yeah, that that tracks. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking snowboard or uh sled. Yeah, I'm down with that, especially in that area. Yeah. All right. All right. And then moving on, not only do we have this disheveled basketball hoop for $40, but a used baseball glove for 50 bucks. Okay. My my market on used sports equipment stops around like 30 bucks. It looks used like a kid's baseball, baseball glove. Gloves, it doesn't matter what size it is used for 50 bucks it, it like even a hockey stick can't gather my attention for 50 bucks used yeah so this one uh, all this is maybe the first time that we found that the price tag was too expensive on something really stupid but i mean that 40 dollar baseball hoop is definitely too expensive on something Pretty damn stupid. Well, also, it's a lefty glove, so you have to play the percentages of lefties and righties in the world. Okay, if we're strictly going off our podcast, we got... One each? Maybe. (laughs) We'll never know. Yeah. Anyway, and, um, if you need somewhere to use that or actually use that basketball hoop of yours. Uh, and store your glove. Or store your glove, yeah. You can get an actual Milwaukee Bucks basketball locker from the Bradley Center. 
for which just goes five hundred dollars. Which just goes to show that the Bradley Center is probably the last NBA based arena to yeah. convert to nice lockers because this thing is really bad. <laughs> Like, I'm sure it's got some storage cube in the middle there on the bottom that someone could sit on top of. Uh, But other than that... It has a small little hanger. Yeah, that I mean, the hanger is not what bugs me about this. It's the (laughs) fact that it looks like it's, you know, like, been left behind in a warehouse. I mean, it basically has if you look around it. Yeah. Yeah, so $500... Uh, I guess I was expecting maybe a Milwaukee Bucks color locker. Yeah, and Just, I mean... Not to be too picky, but... I mean, there's nothing... Aside from, like, maybe if you actually know what the lockers are supposed to look like, there's nothing actually, you know, stand out that that would actually be, like, a locker from there. Well, there's nothing... Yeah, like you said, there's nothing to suggest that this is actually legitimate, despite the fact that it is hard to replicate a locker yeah. in that size. Yeah, true. We'll see. Yeah. All right. That 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 one probably is too big to even get on some pickup trucks. So that might be, you know, on the market for a while. Yeah. All right. Anyway, moving on. Okay, you want to take this one? Sure. All right. So, uh, you know, Everyone with the kiddos, you, you're you always looking for storage, stuff like that. This is not that. Um, this is what looks to be a toy 1990s Brett Favre Packer locker. And if you think that Brett Favre is a, a locker model, I don't even know what that means, but sure. I, I mean, guess he could be. Also, like when they do like player locker models, don't they always put the last name? Yeah, but this one looks like it had some stickers put on it. Yeah, but I'm just saying... So, like, I'm guessing a, a fan did this. Yeah, because usually they put the last name, and I doubt they would put, like, if it was an actual, like, Packers thing, they'd put the first name. How much would you bet that that kid would have spelled far wrong, though? Oh, no, I'm not taking that bet. That's a definite. <laughs> F-A-V-R-E. All right, um, but yeah, that thing we also, in other pictures of it, which are not on here, uh, it's also a very rusty, small, miniature-sized locker. One that, basically, I, I feel like this thing is a desktop decorative piece, and it's $20, which is way more than it ever should be. Yep. All right, you're up. All right, so now, directly in the middle... We have a Pabst Bart the Bart Star Super mm-hmm. Bowl patch. Yep. Uh, does that not not a patch that was ever worn on a, on a jersey? I'm guessing. No way. One because it one because it says that it was sponsored by Pabst, and two because it's only one player, Bart Star, being shouted out on. By as a Super Bowl champion, and it's someone a, wants seven dollars for this. Bart Starr, what are you going to do Bowl with champions. it? Champions. He's not just the champion; he's the champions. So he's it, all. It also, it also kind of looks like a Rams helmet. Yeah, definitely, dude. I mean, you can make the case for the G, right? It, I mean, yeah. It also does look like a, a G, but from a distance, it looks like the Rams too. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Seven dollars is it, it's not the price tag that's the problem, it's what can you do with this that is a major problem because there's nothing you can do with it. Literally nothing. You can't put this on your shirt and then look cool with it. It's literally just a decorative piece. And you right. could argue that whoever, you know, Pabst or whoever distributed this probably should not have made this in patch form. This should have been sticker, put it on the on like the bumper of your car. Yeah. And be like, it's wasted space, but I found a, a use for it. Yeah, because there's no way you're sewing this on anywhere. Nope. 
It's a shame. I mean, I wouldn't even want to collect it and collecting dust anywhere around me, so. And, and you know what? I'll say this. You can put that patch in your miniature Brett Favre In my miniature Brett Favre locker? Yeah, and then you can put that in your Milwaukee box. Actual locker. I think so. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you want to take the the next one? Yeah, so this one, it wasn't horrible. Coca-Cola sponsored a Milwaukee Bucks nip beanie. But in other pictures... My problem is, this is the the first picture you see. I can see Coca-Cola, but where's Milwaukee Bucks? Yeah, which it was on the other side of the hat. We'll say that. But also on the other side of the hat, massive amounts of sweat stains <laughs> that take this thing from being worth $25 to being worth a trip to the garbage can. You can't sell that. It's not right. Yeah. And the burns just tied up the game. Oh, damn. Ooh. All right. Anyway, last one. Uh, last, last two, yeah. Yeah, so now... Uh, for all you Bucks fans out there, oh, you this can is the best one. Get your Bucks in six coffee mug. Oh, I thought we were going. No, way. that one's the last one, man. Okay, you got it. So, uh, all right, no, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I don't know how useful this would be to you at the current time if you're a Bucks fan. I mean, a mug is a mug. It, it, it's useful for sure. Just. Not in a way that you have pride. Yeah, unless you're uh, using it as a hermit in your own house and not showing it to anybody for the current yeah. future. Uh, uh, if it only has print on one side of the mug, you can turn it and put like plants in it. Just sure. like windowsills. Or you can uh, be a lefty style. and that will face you the entire time. Yeah, that could work. <laughs> that could work. Or you could, uh, if you can find some ceramic whiteout, you're you're golden here. Yeah, but I don't know, ten dollars for something after ceramic whiteout anyway. I mean, the ceramic whiteout is probably worth more than the, the mug. <laughs> yeah. All right, you want to take the last one? Oh boy, what I! All right, so uh, checking in with just around twelve thousand six hundred twenty-one miles. Uh, so, you know, low in usage, uh, near and dear to all of our hearts, because it has, like everybody else uses, an automatic transmission. Uh, it, it looks like a tissue box slash a car that's already been smashed in. It's the 2013 model smart car for the Milwaukee box. So you get... A white smart car with purple trim and two older Milwaukee Bucks logos. They call it the 2013 Smart for Two Bucks box car, which I I don't know what that means. I Uh, don't know. That must be I'm out of the geographical loop there. So get yourself a car for under $7,000 that looks like it doesn't belong on the road and is just so embarrassing that someone's actually selling a car that looks to be in good condition for but to be fair 10, like i'm not going to be surprised if somebody bought that oh i i mean i wouldn't be if it's like the super fan buys it but the regular fan no way no no and that car not, is not even cool. a smart not even a smart car obsessive fan would buy this and like the thing about like smart cars are cool and all but like that car is super small. Like, what am I, I mean, doing with that car? You I can't can probably get not even fit a passenger. Car. No, you can't. Get, you can't even get groceries in that car. I probably can't even fit a passenger, even if it has a second seat. It's the perfect car to go get eggs in, <laughs> because it's the only car where it can't slide around. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. Anyway, let's see what we got next. You want to take the first one? Uh, yeah. 
All right. So it was brought to my attention by my co-host earlier. Uh, let's say two days ago that golf is the only sport that's been played on both the earth and the moon. And that is our first useless fact of the day because until there's a tournament on the moon. Yep. You know. All right. And then uh, why bother? moving on for that, right? Uh, in the expansion era, so post the original six teams, only two players have won the Art Ross, having more goals than assists. And they're on the screen if you can see, but they are Jerome McGinley and Alex Ovechkin. Um, and neither one's really a surprise, but... But I mean, still, having more goals than assists is quite unheard of because of the nature of primary and secondary assists. You're bound unless to get Unless your name is rhythm. Alex Ovechkin. Unless your name is Alex yeah, Ovechkin. Yeah. He I, is the one player who excludes that mold. Yeah. All right. Next up, um, and this is kind of a, a fun shot at LeBron. He has the most uh, shots attempted in NBA playoff history with 5,006 shot taken. Yep. And number two on the list is Kobe with 4,499 shots taken. So Kobe, Mr. Shoots a lot, taking less shots in the playoffs than LeBron. And he's not even in the playoffs this year. Yep. All right. And uh, next stat is there have been, uh, or in fact, there have been five NFL officials who have ref five Super Bowls apiece. And then to go along with that, or so their names, what, Bob Beeks, Ron Bochin, Bob Beeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Fett, Jack Al Jury, and Tom Keller. And, fun fact, they also get a Super Bowl ring. Meaning, these five have more rings than 28 NFL teams. Yep. Climb the mountaintops. That's some they bling. They certainly did. They have some bling, don't they? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that, and despite all that bling, by the way, St. Louis scored again. Nice. But despite all that bling... Players will still yell at them about throwing a flag. Yeah. Keeps them humble. Keeps them humble. All right. You want to the next? Yeah. Former MLB catcher Harry Cheedy was the first ever player to be traded for himself. Yeah. I don't know if that's a – that's like how bad do you have to be to be traded for yourself? I think the Pirates had a pitcher who was traded for himself. Vic Black or something like that. Wasn't he just traded back? Yeah, but he, I think he was a player to be named later in the uh, trade back. Because <laughs> this guy, yeah, he was traded for a player to be named later. And then he was named later. All right. And last one that we have, at least, is... All right. Do, 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 Actually, do, 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 do you want to take do, that one? Do, 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 do. Or are you looking up uh, something? Uh, uh, um, I don't see it, so you can take it. All right, so the heaviest person to play in the MLB uh, only played 14 games. Weighed, there's a couple of varying stats. I think one had him at like 370 pounds at once, and one had him at like 320. What was his name? Walter. Walter Young. Walter Young. He played Walter a total. Walter Young, of, aka Forever Young. He played a total of 14 games in the MLB. He was drafted by the Pirates in the 31st Course. round. Sorry, that about guy. Right. Yep. Somehow made the majors. Thankfully, not for us. Yeah, but that he immediately dropped out of the I mean, the next year. He went to like AAA, AA, and then he's never heard from again. I mean, I'm just surprised he didn't make the MLB team for us when we were in the midst of that 
horrible 20 years of just misery. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I guess you guys have standards a little bit. No. <laughs> the only standard is you have to be on a cheap contract. Fair enough, but we don't know how cheap his contract was, so can't tell you. I mean, he got to the majors when he was 26. He probably wasn't on the cheapest deal. Yeah. All right. Now time for some forgotten stars. Nice picture, by the way. Yo. Oh, yeah. I, I, I took a different picture, and then I uh, whited out the player in it. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, so... I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm just dandy, Sean. Why are you asking? <laughs> Why are you always going to, like, interrogate me? First player we have is Vince Carter. And uh, yes, we know he's still playing, but the fact of the matter is you didn't know he was still playing. Yeah, I don't think either of us remembered he was still playing. Oh, I did. Oh. For sure. I definitely didn't. I mean, it's one of those things you kind of forget that he was playing for the Hawks because, like, who's watching the Hawks? But, you know. Uh, yeah, so anyway, this guy's resume. Kind of right? fell off a little bit. So, yeah. he's playing, he's currently played for 21 seasons. Yeah, it's uh, he's still going so far. Maybe, possibly, possibly he hasn't announced yet. He's an eight-time NBA All Star, and I'm pretty sure they were all consecutive. Yes, they were. Uh, he hasn't was, been an All Star in twelve years. He was a first-round pick in '98. Mm-hmm. Number five overall. Uh, Olympic gold medalist, and yep, his 2000. current stats are 17.2 points per game and 4.2, 4.4 rebounds per game for his career. Might be Which going down, we don't impre- know. Well, it, it, I was about to say, it's very impressive considering the fact it has to be going down. Yeah. He's not playing much anymore, so it has to be going well, down. Well, I mean, not playing much. I mean, like, they calculate rebounds per game no matter how many minutes you played, or do they, right, like, do rebounds per, game, per 48 or however long? Well, yeah, the yeah, but, yeah, it's per 36, but we're not using that stat right now. Okay. Oh, and also, fun fact about Vince Carter, he's 42 years old. He's like the NBA. I mean, he's been playing basketball for half his, oh, in the NBA for half his life. Yeah. Damn. Yep, 42 years young. Yeah. All right, next one. You want to take it? Yeah. As soon as I see that the graphic changes. All right, Omar Vizquel. So, speaking of guys who've played for... You know, such a large portion of their life. Omar Vizquel played in the MLB level of organized baseball for 24 years. Only a three-time All-Star in 1998, 99, and 2002, but an 11-time Gold Glove winner, meaning he almost brought home Gold Gloves in half a year as he played uh, in, yeah, that's uh, at the MLB impressive. level. A career 272 batting average and only 80 home runs in 24 years and 951 RBIs. He was also not drafted by an MLB team. Instead, was a non-drafted signee of the Seattle Mariners. I mean, also, like, MLB has had some weird drafts, right? They changed their number of draft rounds. Well, yeah, there's like 75 now. Yeah, it's just like... Which is slightly exaggerated, but one of these years, it probably won't be. Yeah, true. Yeah, but that's a pretty impressive career for that long. Even though he's only had 80 home runs, that's probably the only like important low number that people will look at. I mean, 951 RBIs is kind of low for 24 years, too. Yeah, but 1K RBIs, like... Well, that's like 50... Uh... Let's do the math here. It's about 50 51 per year. Uh, um, no, it's 39.63. What the heck am I in? Oh, yeah, 40. Yeah, okay. It's about 40 per year. year. 40 RBIs per year is pretty low. Yeah. I mean, a, a good an all-star. But I mean, he normally, was good enough to get those gold gloves. True. An all-star normally gets 40 by the all-star break, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it shows he was a three-time All-Star only, so. What are you saying? You, you downgrading his... No, I'm not downgrading it. I mean, the game. 
in order to win that many gold gloves, you have to be good at that part of the game. Oh, yeah. And, and not just a, good. A regular, great. a regular, yeah. So, a regular defensive first guy. And and that's your game. Like, all power to you. And that's amazing to get almost a gold glove every other year. Like, yeah, that, not bad. That's, you can't talk down that. And nobody's good at everything, so. Nor, nor would I try to talk that down. <laughs> nobody's good at everything, so he did what he did really well. He did what he set out to do. Yep. All right. All right, moving on. Yeah, so next we have Alexi Yashin. Yeah, you're definitely taking this one. Yeah, so he was drafted number two overall in 92 by the Ottawa Senators, right? So he was a three-time All-Star in 94, 99, and 02, pretty spread mm-hmm. out, just like the other guy. Uh, uh, in fact, the the, ba- the last two All-Star games were the same years as Visco. Yep. Um, he was a captain for both teams uh, that he played for, the Senators and the Islanders, uh, and he recorded eight hat tricks in the NHL, which is damn impressive. It is, especially for a guy I'd never heard of before. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, and, and that's great criteria for forgettable stars is when one of us has no idea who the other one is. Yeah, and especially when they've had a career like this, right? I, he's yeah. had a, just under 550 points in his career with 246 being goals, and that's mm-hmm. in 12 years. So that's solid 20 goals a season. Yeah. And that's a lot more than you can ask most players. True. Do you know how long he was in the league for? He had a 12-year career. Okay. Did I put that in there? Yes, it's at the bottom. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, but his career was over pretty fast for being a number two overall pick. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for being a captain of two teams 12 years is kind of Yeah. The criteria. The criteria. Mm-hmm. All right, so you want to take over the last one? Yeah, it is so sad when when we have to come to an end, but here we are with by far the highest profile forgotten star to date, possibly, and that's Sean Alexander, a mid-first-round pick by Seattle in 2000. He played in the NFL only eight years, a three-time pro pro bowler between 2003 and 2005 but he was the nfl mvp and offensive player of the year in 2005 a two-time nfl rushing touchdown leader in 2001 and 2005 and a one-time rushing yards leader in five basically in 2005 he stacked all of his stats up to the top in all of the rushing categories and he apparently played for the Redskins for a year in uh, 2008, I want to say. And then he fell um, off the face of the earth. And that was the last we heard of him. Which, running backs, they don't have the longest shelf life for a career. I mean... Eight years is still pretty short. I mean, also, like, running backs kind of... They have their prime, and then they take a pretty hard fall. So, it's not... The- I mean, he's not a Hall of Famer, but... At least not um, in my books, but the fact of the matter is, if you look at all those numbers... Yeah, and 2005, it was amazing. Yeah, what could have been. Yeah, and I mean, it's just unfortunate that, like, running backs have, like, the short... One of the shortest careers in the Mm -hmm. NFL. Running backs and uh, some defenders. Yeah, and you just look at those numbers in 2005, and they kind of just drop. Like after that, right? He three consecutive mm-hmm. Pro Bowl appearances, and then bam. It was almost like he was went from the top of his game to nobody won. Yep, yep. Just based off of age alone, probably. Yeah, then... kind of sucks, but he was a pretty damn good player. I mean, we've seen running backs on the opposite side of thirty still succeed, like D'Angelo Williams and all those other guys. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that a power back couldn't last. Yep. All right. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm good. All right, well... What about you, Sean? Nothing for me. 
Oh. Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's a slightly shorter episode than normal. Um, no wheel spin. That's the thing. Yeah, no wheel spins. Hopefully we bring them back next week, but it will be until next week for us to have an episode. So see you then. Yep, Jeopardy James lost. <laughs> there you go. Gave you uh, some breaking news that if you didn't notice earlier in the day. There you Not go. really breaking news, but news. There you go. Thanks for tuning in.